The only thing fresher than this cut is blending objects together. I saw this add-on called Auto Blend, and I thought, how interesting. It's all done in the compositor after the fact. This object blending tutorial sponsored by Squarespace, we'll talk about that later. I'm gonna start off with two different objects. What they are isn't of, like, great significance. I'm gonna make the torus, let's say, red. And let's make the ground have some kind of pattern. I'm just gonna go with a checker texture. And the seam is as clear as day. Trying to hide this bad boy is difficult. Here's what we can do. For Eevee, I'm gonna go to my render passes, and I'm gonna enable these specific ones. Z pass, position pass, crypto mat, either object or material. In Eevee, you can actually composite live. If I was to do like a hue saturation value and drop the saturation, you're not going to see anything until in the viewport, I go to always, always use the compositor. No saturation, max saturation, different hue. You can actually composite as you work in 3D. If I want to kind of blend these edges, the first step is we need to find the edges. I'm going to add in the crypto mat. This is the thing that tells us which object is which. This very clearly defines where the edges are even as I add more objects and to find the edges let's just go with a filter node there's many ways to do this but I believe so build it seems like it's not showing the edge I believe that's just because it's like a color thing both of these have a value of one on the red channel don't worry about it to make sure these are different I'm gonna say look at this as a black and white image so now it finds these edges this white is brighter than the ground where if I duplicate it and do something like that now we have all of these edges however not every single one of these is the one I want to blur I want to blur this connection point and this connection point and where these grids meet. What I do not want to blend, you can see the silhouette of this torus, I don't want that. So we somehow need to tell Blender what is a connecting edge where objects are intersecting and which one is just kind of like the silhouette of an object. If two objects intersect, like this one and this one, they are occupying the same point in space. Whereas like something like this, the silhouette, there is no overlapping in space. If I can then isolate sections that are in the same place, and then we're good to go. A way to do this is using that Z pass we extracted. If I look at the depth pass, eh, you can kind of barely see anything. What it does is it stores as a value the depth information. So if I see where it's greater than a certain number, you can kind of see this going into the distance. If two sections are intersecting, they're in the same position and therefore at the same depth. If we look for edges in the depth map, that means there's a change in depth. In other words, we don't care about that. There's no overlap there. And we're going to give the same Sobail kind of treatment to it. So now you can see these edges. Notice that this is the exact opposite of what we had here in some sense. That doesn't show us sections like these where the Z depth is the same. I just need to know where this is very white. So let's take this Sobel, check where it is greater than a uh, certain value, and now we have these nice lines. We have our original crypto mat thing, we have the depth idea, and we want to subtract one from another so that we're only left with the contact areas. You might think it's as simple as subtracting this from this, and eh, that's not correct, which is weird. First of all, we want to make sure this is clamped, so any addition, subtraction, whatever, stays between the 0 to 1 range. Second of all, one thing we're not accounting for is that this this Sobel looks like it's white in certain sections, but it's actually bigger than white. So we want to make sure that this is in a zero to one range so that when we subtract it, it can get as low as black. You can either throw in a math node, like set it to add and add zero, making sure to do this clamping. If you think it's more intuitive, you can use a clamp node where we say clamp this between zero and one. Now this is almost, almost, almost working. There's like a pixel thin line separating us from victory. These lines are almost exactly the same thickness. I want to make sure to widen one so that we subtract what we're supposed to, plus a bit of buffer area. Area. Take the depth and we're going to dilate slash erode. If you look at this visually, it just thickens or thins the line. And this is exactly what's going to let us, you know, isolate this. So you kind of want to find the minimum that will kind of get the job done. We've isolated the intersections and the rest of the game is saying, what do you want to do with that? We can blend two objects by one blurring their intersection. The second thing is I want to displace the seam. If we bend it and blur it, you kind of stop seeing what's going on. That's my theory. Different from the auto blend add-on, which uses painting some kind of painting if you know you know this tutorial is sponsored by squarespace if you're making a website you gotta use squarespace i use it for cgmatter.com copy me be me all my project files my patreon clone all of that is on cgmatter.com hosted by squarespace they have a payment platform integrated that is pivotal for the purpose of the website they have an asset library that lets me do all these images and gifs and gifs and i can store those directly on squarespace's platform and thirdly if you want to quick start use that ai to describe your website or to fill your website with content very quickly go to squarespace try it out and make a website and when you're ready to launch use this link below to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain and now let us blur things together let's start off with a bit of blurring so let's take our original image right here with the render layers and i want to say blur the image so i can blur like this but i want to blur only in these areas over here i think the first thing is let's take these lines that are super thin and we want to kind of have a radius slider saying what distance can it affect blur by some amount shit 
<laughs> well, let's reopen Blender. Hopefully the recover recovers. Okay, we're good, we're good. So what I was saying is we're going to take our overlapping areas and I'm going to blur them by a certain amount. And then we want to use that as a map to say, where do you blur the image? So I'm not only going to connect this here, it's like imperceptible because at most we're blurring by like a gray value of 0.5. Whereas you want to blur by like 20 or 30 or whatever, multiply by a really big number. So something like that. And now you're starting to see it just a little. This is the before and after. This is dynamic in the sense that if I add a new object, Object, like a cube, it will blend everywhere. Now, of course, this isn't the final effect. It's better than nothing, but it just kind of looks like there's smears. I also want to include some displacement. And how does displacement work? There is a node called displace. What the displace node does is it takes a certain vector, a certain direction, and it pushes the pixels in that direction. For example, if my vector is 1, 1, I can take the scale for both of these and just shove it up. It's almost like a translation, but on a per pixel level, because this vector can be different for every single thing. So what should it be? Well, it should be some source of randomness so that it distorts our lines and isn't really easy to follow. Luckily for us, I think semi-recently, the compositor got nodes like the noise texture and other kinds of textures as well. If we view this, again, you got to get used to this idea of we're in screen space. We have this noise texture that we can extract the color from. Color is just a fancy way to say vector, a fancy way to say direction. I can plug it into this vector over here. And now our displacement, if we make it really big, you can see it has this rippling. One thing I'm noticing is it's kind of going up and to the right. And that makes sense because our noise is some value between zero and one on X, Y, and Z, you've heard the spiel. You want to turn off normalize. This is what's going to have it stay nice and centered. Now, as I scale this, you can see, you know, we're doing something like that. If I limit this effect to only certain areas, I think we're going to be golden. It's the exact same areas where we're doing our blurring. I'm going to use a different math multiply, plug this into the X and Y before and after. Very subtle, but you can see it's distorting only certain areas. If I bump this up to something like a thousand, now you can really see it's displacing those areas. Do that. And then you also add like a blurring. However, I do think you want to do it in the other order because you want to think of it as we have these lines they get displaced and now this is no longer representative of the thing you also have to displace those lines so i'm basically going to flip the order of operations we have our whole spaghetti mess now this should both blur and uh, displace correctly admittedly i understand that it looks whack right now but just to show you where we're coming from we have these super harsh lines and now we have something like that. So we're definitely getting somewhere. How do we get this to look better? I think the key, not takeaway, the key issue, the weakest link is this displacement. It makes it look very obvious and distorted and wrong. That's because it's source of randomness, this noise texture, and it kind of looks stupid. <laughs> so if you have a stupid noise, it's going to make a stupid <laughs> displacement. Scale it up, add detail, add roughness, things to break up the pattern. So I'm going to bring up the scale. You can see it's exactly affecting these blending areas, which is going to update as you move it, add maybe a bit of detail, and roughness is where it's really going to break up this pattern. So I had some roughness. Let's say we like this idea. I know it's trash, but let's say we like it. One thing I'm seeing is as I move around the viewport, even a little, we get all this like distortion, which we want, but it's changing over time as we change our view angle. That's because this noise texture is attached to the screen. So I'm kind of rotating in 3D space, but the noise doesn't move. This is what's giving that illusion of it kind of just being this weird piece of glass in front of the lens. We almost want a noise texture applied to the scene, not as a filter on top of it. And now you're seeing why the last pass I talked about is going to be relevant. The position pass. I went by it. This gives us the position of anything at any time. If I look at this noise texture and I apply this position as the coordinate system, all of a sudden in the compositor, you have noise that sticks. But look at that. It's kind of sticking on much better. If we can now make this look good, it will also be coherent. I do want to remind you that all of this blurring and distortion and whatever is ultimately dependent on this overlap map we made right here. One issue is if I like blur it, it's going to get really dim. Something we can do about that is you can take this blur and throw it through a normalize. What normalize does is it says no matter what you got, squeeze it between zero and one. So now if we blur it, you know, it will kind of remain bright. Throw on a value node. This is going to give us the same number for both. As I increase this, you can see the radius of effect of this idea is also increasing. Let's add another torus. By the way, so here you can see an issue where these tori relative to each other don't blend. If I had to guess, the crypto mats can be the same for both of these, almost guaranteed. Yep, the crypto mat for both of these is white. I mean, it does know that they're different objects, which is interesting. Take this crypto mat, which has these colors, some of which look the same, but I'm going to send it through a white noise texture. Yeah, that gives us different values. White noise texture, what I thought right there is it's a randomizer. You give it an input, and even if these inputs are super similar, almost the same color, it will send them to wildly different places. 
places. And I'm going to connect this to the RGB black and white. And now you can see these tori are blending into each other. That's kind of the key concept, right? The rest of it is what tricks do you want to use for blending? This will also work in cycles. The only difference, I believe, is in cycles. We're not going to get to see that live viewport because we don't have access to these live passes. That's what's special about Eevee. It just works like real time. Here I have my floor and I'm going to move a monkey right through it. And you can see how it almost like blends in with the ground as it comes in and out. And it knows exactly where to do that. If I did not have this enabled, super harsh edge. So even if it doesn't look great, you just turn it down a bit and the effects are already massive. Here I'm taking my radius of effect. I'm going to make it 100. Now it's like super, you know, spaced out. Hopefully you learned something. Oh, and, and my version is going to be available on the website. Okay, bye.